All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be making a three-piece Creek Chub swim bait. Uh, I think these are really cool creatures and I find myself to forget about them. But they really do have really cool coloration and different scale patterns that I like to try to replicate. So this one, we're also gonna to try to add the lead so that way it has a perfect level of buoyancy and kind of stays suspended in the water. So it should be a lot of fun. So we got a nice piece of pine here, so let's get started. Stay tuned because later in the video, you guys will see something pretty unique that I tried to figure out on how to be able to test these lures completely. So it's pretty fun. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. All right, here's the basic shape of the Creek Chub so far, and now it's time to use the Dremel to shape it out. All right, so here it is with a bunch of Dremeling done. Obviously, I, I have to sand it quite a bit yet, but I also marked down where the gill plates are going to be. And uh, that's probably one of the hardest parts, honestly, is making sure that they're all aligned. But what helps me is if you look at it from the top down view, make sure they're aligned across. And then if you look at it this way, you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see that they're uh, at the same height as well. So that also helps with aligning eyes. So you definitely don't want to finish up a lure and then realize, oh shoot, my eyes are misaligned. So now the next step is to carve out the gills. All right, so here's the basic gill structure so far. I still have to sand it quite a bit, but I also marked everything out for where everything's gonna go. So we have the, uh, the middle, joint right here the rear joint right here and then also the slot for where the tail fin's going to go the top fin and then uh also at the moment i have uh five lead holes uh, a little one on the tail i'm not going to do too much there but mainly the weight's going to be in the middle uh just because that's where most of the wood is and uh, just to try to get the equal amount of buoyancy like i mentioned earlier and uh, i was originally going to add a fin here and then put a line tie off the fin or the hook hanger excuse me off the fin but i don't think this lure is big enough to use the size lexan that i was going to use for the tail so uh, it won't be big enough to uh, be able to drill into and then add that hook hanger off the end. So uh, we're just going to add a regular uh, hook hanger there and then also the lead would get in the way anyway. So we're just going to add a regular uh, hook hanger right there, hook hanger right here, and then like I mentioned the five lead holes, uh, line tie at the front, and uh, it's all looking pretty good so far. So can't wait to finish it. It's going to be awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned because this is what, what we're doing next. So now it's time to cut the slot for the tail. And uh, this is the fin all finished up. I sanded it quite a bit. I'm also gonna add some uh, spines in there, but I made sure to sand it just cause um, a handy tip is that when you sand this, it allows the super glue or whatever uh, glue that you're adding to uh, be able to stick to it better because it has something to hold on to. And uh, this Lexan, I think it's a quarter inch, maybe a little bit smaller, but I was debating on using a thinner one for uh, the top fin, but I, I figured I'd just sand it down to a point uh, for this top fin. So. So that should end up pretty cool and really durable. So that's what I would like. So uh, there it is. And now it's time to cut the slots. When you're making tails like this with the Lexan tail and you have to cut a slot, never uh, kind of go like this, never go like that. Because then you end up breaking this outside and then you'll kind of be screwed. You could probably fix it with some super glue, but what I always do is I go in that angle and then take this part off bit by bit. So that way you don't end up prying that off because uh, I've definitely done that in the past. So so here's the joints all started up and uh, I think I'm going to move this lead hole just a little bit forward yet. And then uh, this one a little bit forward as well. And then also the line, uh, hook hanger as well. So just so that way those two don't collide once I finish off that joint. And uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I have this all finished up, the tail uh, slot, the top slot. This one fits nice and snug. So I'm probably going to use resin to put those in because I want to make sure that I do it right and that they don't fall out so looking pretty neat so far now i gotta clean it up quite a bit and then add all the hardware and everything but uh that's what it's looking like all right so i was originally going to add lead just now but uh i decided to seal it up first i got some polyurethane here so uh i'm gonna do that i just finished up all the joints so here's the three separate pieces and uh we're gonna sand off a little bit, just clean up the joints a little bit, and then uh, get to seal into the polyurethane, and then I'll be back later to uh, finish it up, add some lead, and get all the details. All right, so with the first test, it's floating. So I'm gonna add more weight to the top head and then probably also the middle section and then it should be able to balance out.
So the thing about uh, making sure that you have a balanced sliver is that you also have to put into uh, perspective that you're also going to add clear coat, hooks, hardware, um, everything. Like uh, the tail fin, even the top fin. And those are all things that weigh something, including the eyes and everything. Maybe not the eyes specifically, but you have to drill out an area for the eyes, the eye socket, which takes away wood, which is, in other words, more buoyancy. So it's a lot of things to put into perspective to be able to figure out the correct level that you need so i'm just going to try to get to the point where it floats but uh if you hit it once if you kind of tap it it'll go down and then rise up slowly because then hopefully the amount of stuff that i add to it yet will allow it to stay sitting in the middle so all right i think i got it pretty much push it down it's so slow that it slowly comes right back up that's pretty good i think i'm still going to take a little bit more out just because uh, again, make, putting into uh, perspective all the other things I'm going to add in order for this to be uh, just right. So I'm going to take a little bit more out and then it should be all good. All right, let's see. All right, I think that's what I want right there. It's a slow rise, but at the end of everything, it should be pretty evened out just because of all the things that we're going to add, the hooks and everything like I explained earlier. So that looks pretty good. So now it's time to add the fins, eye sockets, and get this thing ready to be painted. All right, so here it is. Uh, as you can see here, I had the tail along with the top fin, and I think it's all coming together pretty cool. Uh, I'm really excited to start painting. I got some new stencils for Christmas, and uh, I'm really excited to see how they work. So I also have to add the eye sockets and also another layer of polyurethane, just to make sure that everything's really smooth for painting, and uh, I can't wait to get to it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And in case you're wondering, this one so far, uh, I spent maybe two and a half to three and a half hours on this. I'm not quite sure when I started, so somewhere around that probably three hour range. But uh, it's definitely a ton of fun, so once it's done, I can't wait to see it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the painting. Make sure you guys don't forget about the lures that I make during the winter time because uh, before the fishing season starts, I'll make sure to do a vote and then uh, we'll see which ones that you guys want, want to see me fish with the most. I made quite a bit and if you're new to the channel, make sure you check out the other videos because those are definitely a ton of fun to make too. Alright, so as you guys saw there, I added the black line and these are just under colors for what's going to be underneath all the detail and scales, but uh, I think it's pretty cool to add all these touches. It really makes everything look uh, much more natural so if you look at certain pictures of creek chubs obviously they can vary depending on the fish but uh most of them have this black and kind of chartreuse looking line there so i use this uh pearl uh pearl lime green from createx colors and i use that for underneath the black line here and i had a really cool chartreuse looking line which will end up hopefully pretty awesome at the end so that's all i'm doing i'm just going right underneath that and then we can get all to, to all the scales and all the other details so pretty cool All right, so as you guys saw there, I just added a purple color to the top. It is, uh, it's called Purple Brilliant by Folk Art, and it's a color shift. So it looks really neat on the top there. And uh, I'm just going to go on the front and back of all these. And it's just going to be on the top because if you look at certain uh, creek chubs, you can see how they kind of have this really pretty uh, kind of rainbowy purple effect on the top of them. And uh, it's not for all of them. Like I mentioned earlier, it obviously varies by the fish, but uh, that's at least what I've experienced. And I think it looks really neat, so... That's what that's going to be like on the top. And then we're going to add uh, some of the silver by Createx Colors with uh, the fishnet next. So I might add a couple more colors in between, but that's what we're looking like so far. All right, so what you guys just saw there was I sprayed towards the front with the black. And then I uh, sprayed a bunch of silver all over it just to make uh, kind of bait fish looking scales. And they ended up looking really cool. So... That's what it's looking like so far, and there's a little bit of a splotchy spot right there, and uh, but that's all right because that's actually I think perfect placement for where the, the one fin is going to be. So there it is. I think I have to add quite a bit more uh, details to it, but that's good. It, it's doing what I wanted with muting that uh, that under color. So pretty cool. All right, so now I've mixed together some uh, green here, brown, and also some orange, and I got some pretty natural looking top color so i'm gonna add that to the top of this lure and then we're so close to being done we just have to add a couple more details of the fins and everything else so there we go
this is the fin all finished up uh there's two fins on this one so when it's all put together it'll look like that i think it's setting up looking really awesome i just have to sign it and add the eyes and i think it's all done all right guys so here's a little drawing here and uh this is my homemade rotisserie i made uh it does go a little faster than i would like um, but it does get the job done. It doesn't spray off any clear coat or anything like that So I don't have to worry about that, but uh, it does make sure that you get an even coat, which is what I want so uh, End up pretty cool. I, I made this not too long ago, and uh, it's really simple I just put a couple big nails on the end of a skinny piece there and then made a stand for my drill and I have a clamp over here And that clamp just basically holds it in place just so that way uh, it can spin without me having to do it. So I'll let this run for maybe 20 minutes or so, and then it should be all dry, and or not all dry yet, but pretty much set so that way I can hang it up and then uh, wait for tomorrow for when it's all done. So I think, I think it ended up really cool. I can't wait to show you guys. So again, thank you guys so much for watching, and don't click off yet because we're going to be able to test it in the fish tank to see how uh, it ended up doing. So there it is. So before we use our new gadget here, we're going to see how well we guessed with the weight of this uh, three-piece creek chub. All right, so that's a very slow sink, which is good. It is a little bit tail heavy, so next time, if there's next time when I make a creek chub like this, or even just a regular three-piece swim bait, I definitely have to remember more how much uh, that tail piece and also the, the glue and everything weighs. Because it is a little bit laying down on the tail side but it's pretty good it's a slow sink and when i retrieve it and add the line side to the front there to the nose and everything it's uh definitely going to balance out as you retrieve it so pretty cool so what i have here is a 15 dollars circulation pump that i got off amazon i thought it would work and do the job of being able to test the lures indoors in my fish tank since it is winter time and it's kind of hard to test all our winter time lures so this is a good Hold for now until the summertime starts when we can truly test them out. All right, so this is the test tank right now. It's pretty cool. This is normally for aquariums, so uh, it's no really risk of electricity or anything. And it works pretty well. You can kind of test it there, see how it's swimming, and I think I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, this is no replacement for actually going to a pond or lake or wherever, uh, like regularly testing like we do. But unfortunately, right now, like I mentioned, we cannot do that because of the winter time. So I think it's pretty cool. I'm curious to see how it's gonna work with crankbaits or deep divers because if that lip does catch, I'm not sure how it'll work. So good to, th good to see this one works pretty well. So here it is, the finished three-piece Creek Chub swim bait. I think it ended up really cool and it was definitely a ton of fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the plan right now for over the summer is that I'm going to catch a couple Creek Chubs and put this next to it and uh, see how it ends up. So if you guys want to see those pictures eventually and if you don't want to miss out on any other pictures, follow my Instagram on Hanks underscore baits underscore and you'll be able to see some uh, new updates and cool different pictures of lures that I'm working on and different things that are in the process. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.